Hello, Jorvin here, and I like trains. Factorio's choo-choo machines recently got a major glow-up in the 2.0 update, and I'm not just talking about the fancy elevated rails found in the expansion. It all comes down to this button right here, Schedule Interrupts. Like most things in Factorio, this thing is way more complicated than what first meets the eye. Ever since 2.0 came out, I've been somewhat obsessed with trying to replicate the old LTN mod fully in vanilla. And now, I think I've finally done it. This is the Parameterized Train Network, or PTN. So, if you used LTN back in 1.1, this will probably look familiar. Stations are split between providers, which load items, requesters, which unload them, and depots, where trains wait between deliveries. At requesters, the station buffers are fed into this mess of combinators. When the items in the buffers fall below a certain threshold, a request is sent out on the green radar channel. At the depots, the trains read the incoming requests from the radar, and then some magic happens. Our schedule interrupts are all based on the new wildcard signals, which are special because they can detect and read the items within the names of train stops. So, just to show it off, we were to get into a train and then feed it an item signal, say sulfur, Turn it on correctly. Then the train will then read that signal, go to a provider stop which has sulfur in its name, load it up, go to a requester which also has sulfur in its name, unload, and then go back to the depot to start again. And that's it. All of these combinators are just controlling when and how trains are dispatched. So, if we were to place down a requester blueprint, we will get this dialog box. You can select the item to be requested, the maximum number of wagons per train, so say two, the maximum number of chests that each wagon will empty out to, the maximum number of parking spots, and then finally, the slots per chest. This is the target that the station will attempt to fill up to. So, this station will take those numbers provided and will open itself to how many trains are needed to fill to that target without going over the maximum number of parking spots. The provider stop largely does the same thing, except that it will also limit itself based on how many trains itself can fill based on its own buffer. The depot was the most annoying to figure out. The end result is that we send a constant signal of the items being requested on the green channel, and a repeating pulse of a dispatch signal in form of a check mark down on the red channel. All of these get sent into the depots. Each individual depot will transmit it to the train after delay, which results in this cascading wave of dispatches down a line of depots. The whole reason for all this is to ensure that a train's transit is registered by the provider, transmitted back through the system, and removed from the green wire before the cascading chain reaches the next depot. Is this overly complicated? Yes it is. One thing to be very careful about when you're placing the depot blueprints is to make sure that you overlap a depot with itself, like this. This will ensure that the red wire, which carries the repeating pulse of the dispatch signal, is connected properly between the depots. Next, when you're building the receiver blueprint, you'll have to be careful in connecting the wires in the proper way. First, the receiver has two sides, items and fluids. They are indicated by the display panels. So, if you're connecting to the item depots, connect to the item side of the receiver, and vice versa. With green wire, connect the appropriate side of the receiver to the green wire that runs down the length of the depots. Then, with the red wire, connect the power pole on the left side of the depots from the train's perspective. This is because the chain of dispatches will always go from left to right, and this can't be reversed by mirroring the blueprint. There are three limitations to this whole system. First, because of the logic I use at the depots, trains cannot handle items with a stack size of 1. So no fusion reactors, asteroid chunks, or rocket silos. I don't really know why you would need to be hauling an entire train to those things, but I'm not going to judge. Second, because of this cascading chain of dispatches, all depots of the same type 
item or fluid must be in the same place. So here in my actual world, I'm free to have the item depots here and the fluid depots on the other side of the base, but I can't have some item depots here and some other item depots in another place. That would mess it up. And third, all trains of one type must be the same length. So I can have item trains all with a length of four and fluid trains with a length of two, but I can't have some item trains with four and some other item trains with two. Unfortunately, there just isn't a reliable way to transmit a train length to the circuit network in a way that also makes the system easily expandable. So I'm leaving it at this. So, if it wasn't obvious already, this system is fully functional in vanilla and you don't need the Space Age DLC. But if you do, and you happen to have a mod which increases wagging capacity with higher quality, I've also included this extra set of blueprints which is fully capable of supporting custom wagon sizes. So, if you do end up using this system, please let me know if you find any bugs. I have never been the greatest circuit builder in Factorio, so there's bound to be something that I missed. I also have some other plans for other Factorio content, so maybe subscribe or not. I'll do it anyway. Until then, this has been Jorvan, and thanks for watching.